This is a simulation of the effect that an external potential has on a plane wave. So we're going to start out with a constant external potential. We're going to be looking only at the real part of the wave function. The wave is going to be propagating from left to right. This is arbitrary. We're going to be looking at a plane wave, not a wave packet. And we want to be looking at the sum of incoming and reflected waves. Now we can see this purple line here represents the external potential, whereas this green line represents the energy of the wave. So if we push play, begin to see the wave function propagating. If we increase the energy of the wave, we see that we decrease the wavelength. If we increase the value of the potential, however, we can increase the wavelength. Now, let's look at a potential step. Now, if we start out above the step, we see that there is a wave function on the left side, a wave function on the right side. However, if the energy of the wave is less than the energy of the step, we see that at the barrier, the wave function begins to go to zero. However, since the barrier is not infinite, the wave function does not immediately go to zero as with a particle in an infinite well. We still see that there is some wave function that exists within this step. And we can increase that amount by either increasing the energy of the wave or by decreasing the height of the step. Or conversely, if we increase the height of the step and decrease the energy of the wave, we begin to approach the infinite well situation of the particle in the box. Now let's look at a barrier. When we first look at the barrier, we see that it looks very similar to the step. We have a wave function on the left side here. When we reach the barrier, the wave function begins to go to zero, however, not immediately. And then there is no wave function on the other side of the barrier. However, if we increase the energy of the wave, we see that within this barrier here, the wave function does not actually reach zero. And there's still some wave function that exists on the opposite side of the barrier. So the wave essentially can tunnel through the barrier and reach the other side. Now we see that the probability of reaching the other side is affected by the height of the barrier. If we increase the height of the barrier, there is almost no probability of reaching the other side. Or we return to our original height, if we decrease the energy of the wave, there's also now almost no probability of reaching the other side. Interestingly, the width of the barrier is also a factor in the probability of tunneling. If we increase the width of the barrier, we can make it almost impossible for the wave function to reach the other side. Whereas if we decrease the barrier, now we can see there's a much greater probability of the wave function tunneling through and reaching the opposite side.